a little dynamic when subsidiaries are surplus they can lend to the parent company or other subsidiaries in which is internal to this mnc and externally it can invest in banks and it can buy commercial papers in the market commercial paper market and uh, similarly if uh, subsidiaries are in deficit they will uh, borrow from mnc or they will borrow from other subsidiaries of the mnc okay and not only that if they are in deficit they can go out to borrow externally from banks and they can also issue uh, commercial papers in the commercial paper market that's where that's the first where we started with after that we went on to different instruments uh, prepayment lc bill of exchange and consignment okay so funding decisions or is just uh, as a one topic we discussed funding and cash management today we revised yesterday and day before yesterday we have been discussing about so uh, when we when you look at uh, broad finance functions investment decisions financing decisions dividend decisions working capital decisions and so on or if you uh, if you ignore or if you leave uh, working capital decisions you have more focus on investment funding and dividends okay so investments is more about uh, capital budgeting that we have that in the second cluster after your uh, midterm examinations so how capital budgeting is done how projects international projects are appraised how projects are appraised anyone through time how? value of money good one then so what are the tools you will be using in project appraisal internal rate of return good so that's what i was trying to ask you all uh we are talking about investment decisions which are also known as capital expenditure decisions so when you take capital expenditure decisions it is all about uh, budgeting your total investment and expected returns in future inflow outflow outflow is your investment inflow is your return so you will be try trying to match you will try to balance so if you have a surplus cash inflow you take that project uh, if you have a positive cash inflow and high positive cash flows or more positive cash flows you will take that so this way you will appraise the project using various tools as uh, asha was saying popular tools are internal rate of return arr and np which consider time value of money so that's quite important so in financial management uh, you are taught that's the reason you are responding to me so today let us see how capital budgeting is done in the international scenario by considering the time value of money you will discount future cash inflows right then how do you do it how do you discount what is the discounting factor how do you arrive at discounting factor anyone sir discounting factor would be the expected rate of return uh expected rate of return say for example jmr is building the airport here that's a project the cost of project is say 1000 crores and it's expected cash flows from maybe 50 year onwards 50 year onwards the cost of project is 1000 crores and uh, the gestation period is say 5 years and 6th uh, year onwards it will be getting the cash inflows so from 6th year onwards it will be getting say uh, 100 crores okay 100 crores for 10 years uh, maybe 200 crores 200 crores for 10 years so if i ask you to discount 200 crores to today to present how do you do that in books in exams you will be given you not break your head for that but what is the formula for discounting anyone can anyone discounting so future cash inflow divided by one plus k whole power n that's what you arrive at 
that's how you discount so sixth year cash flow of gmr will be discounted as 200 crore divided by 1 plus k whole power n n here is sixth year okay my question to you is how do you get this k how cfo of gmr infra will arrive at this k what is k what does k talk about you can try rate of return rate of return okay so what, what i agree rate of return i think asha also said said that expected rate of return yeah i agree but it comprises of what if i if i ask you to quantify if i ask you to split into different parts basically there are three parts when you talk about k or expected rate of return or expected rate of return so what are those three okay one is risk free return risk free return number two inflation number three risk premium so when you are arriving at k in any project as a discounting factor it comprises of these three one is risk free return second one is inflation third one is what risk premium sir risk premium because you are taking the risk that risk could be of any nature that depends on the nature of business place promoters suppliers competitors government loss and so on there are many now why i'm asking you that is in capital budgeting you are doing this way considering npv and irr and arriving at k in this way but if it is international capital budgeting it is more complex more challenging why k the way you arrived at k in india to uh, uh, appraise a project is it the same if you are starting a, a new project in sri lanka or thailand no sir it's different it's different how it is different can you guess can you try me now sir Anyone? exchange rate is different exchange rate is number one very good foreign exchange rate is different there is no uh, change in value of money external value of money rupee remains the same okay internal value of money is inflation that we already considered as megna rightly said external value of rupee changes when your project is uh, offshore away from your country so that is the biggest risk that we have to take uh, for a foreign project similarly you have political risk social risk regional risk okay natural risk factors there are many which are added to existing uh, risk factors so the risk premium say risk premium is so uh, for example expected rate of return is 20% out of which say some 7% is risk free return 3% is inflation and 10% is risk premium in indian project but in offshore project the expected rate of return should be less than 20 or 20 or more than 20 what do you say what's your answer domestic project 20 more than 20 sir maybe more than 20 anyone else sir more than 20 more than 20 <laughs> okay right you're right megna and shweta you're right why it should be more than 20 megna or shweta you're right why it should be more than 20 expected rate of return why you're feeling so what could be the reason sir, because the uh, value of uh, the currency is more like do as compared to uh, indian rupee and dollar if we take for example so mm. that okay. is what i'm trying to say sir okay. yeah so risk is more let it be currency risk as magna was saying exchange risk or it could be political risk it could be social risk suddenly government may ask you to leave their country there could be local uh, disturbance regional disturbances could be there natural disasters there are many things when you go out of your country so that adds more risk so more risk more return is expected higher the risk higher the return lower the risk lower the return expected whether you really get it or not it is a different thing but your expectations are high okay so that's how it will go did you understand so 
when you look at investment decisions you have to appraise your project in such a way that you have to arrive at discounting factor k by considering all the risk elements so that is investment decision so it is whether it is npv or irr it depends but popular tools are npv across the world npv is popular it is widely used okay uh, across all the kind of important in usa then uh, funding decisions uh, we already discussed uh, uh, short term you have uh, many things within uh, including part of transactions we have bill of exchange letter of credit lc and we also have uh, receivables funding you have factoring and so on for short term in long term we discussed yeah if you, uh, mncs have their own uh, adjustment process with uh, cash flows adjusted from parent to subsidiary or subsidiary to subsidiary that's how it happens so that is funding decision this is investment decision then how about uh, uh, in funding decision one important thing is funding or financing decisions what is that uh, you have to look into in financing decisions what are the key areas in financing decisions for a company what are the topics what are the areas what are the key areas that you have to consider you can tell me conceptually tax tax good very good tax anyone else okay it is a capital structure you can also sometimes financing decision is also known as capital structure decision so capital structure is more important you want your company to be 100% equity or you want to have more leverage financial leverage by uh, deploying more debt into your capital structure how do you look at your uh, cost of capital what is your uh, vac and uh, to what extent what is the degree of your uh, financial leverage higher the degree of financial leverage more is the risk you will be losing uh, your uh, new loans new uh, banks who are supplying credit to you the problems will come so cost of capital capital structure debt equity cost of debt cost of equity cost of retained earnings cost of preferred equity so all these things should be considered will be considered when you make a financial decision so when you look at uh, capital structure which one you suggest is it more of debt 100% equity or 50 50 what do you suggest for a company uh, so my students are always safe <laughs> better mix why to say okay uh, see 50 50 is a good thing but uh, you one has to understand should you really borrow is there a need for you to borrow because borrowing always invites problems but as uh, shravya was saying you can avoid tax you can reduce the tax burden and increase the profits and increase the shareholders value or increase by increase the dividends paying the dividends that is there but if we, that is not your objective a uh, tax uh, inter borrowing is always a burden if uh to some extent that is okay debt equity ratio is one parameter which will tell you you are uh, at low you are at okay you are at high debt equity ratio degree of financial leverage so these ratios you have to keep in your mind when you say yeah i want debt i don't want debt uh, i think in one of the sessions i was talking you asking you yeah is, is there any company with zero debt yes you can have a company with zero debt services companies can have that if you take software companies like tcs uh, wipro you don't find debt for them because they don't have a project they don't have they, they don't need money to fund a project okay so they they love to be 100% uh, equity okay i think very recently reliance industries limited ril wanted to be a zero debt company so it was clearing all its debt with uh, private equity firms and venture capital firms even facebook and other major global leaders they are investing in reliance industries so it is now becoming 100% equity so whether it is equity or equity with debt or equity with more debt 
it depends on the corporate goals the strategies financial goals and current market scenario so there are many parameters to consider so you have to consider those things for international funding or financing decisions also then dividend decisions this is quite interesting to pay dividends to retain the earnings that is the biggest problem many cfos face or ceos face or management faces for every in every company at then in fourth quarter they break their heads for this whether to declare dividend or retain the earnings what do you say should we pay the dividends or retain the earnings which one is better when companies make profits should that be declared as dividends or should it retain the earnings without declaring the dividends retain the earnings sir retain the earnings okay radha says uh, retain anyone else what is your view it depends sir you are very diplomatic it depends it depends on what megna you are so smart pay it dividend pay dividend shravi is saying megna says it depends radha says retain good the class is distributed very good anyone else okay so may know why retained earnings radha sir retained earnings uh, that add uh, excess funds or uh, for expansion of the company sir where payment of dividends uh, will be in short run so that we can uh, segregate the funds among the shareholders okay. why you want dividends so paying dividend will attract more investors and uh, that oh. will create good 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 that's a good logic Very and good. Uh, the demand for the stock will also increase sir. that's why okay you are right megna it depends on what sir as both said the uh, both the answers are correct sir i am asking you depends on which factors dividend or retained earnings um i keep the company is doing good then okay uh, the company may uh, give dividend sir as shavya okay. already said that it yeah. will attract the you know investors right, and right. all okay. yes sir uh, so then? and um, if the company is facing some problem then it can uh, take uh, the other decision means uh, retain the profit for future okay that's good. why i said that it depends on the situation of the company okay good uh, i think as a uh, Radha said, "A company has to retain the dividends. I mean, dividend retain the earnings or profits, profit after tax, which has to be distributed to shareholders. It should not distribute it as dividend. Rather, retain the earnings because it has profitable projects in hand. New investments are there for the company. Instead of giving the dividends and borrowing money from banks and BFCs or through bonds or debentures, retain the earnings." and invest them in new projects that is the idea that is a uh, the that is a factor which demands retained earnings that's where radha was saying that similarly if the company wants to make the shareholders happy give the dividends usually when the company is plan to go for public issue one more public issue it will declare dividends and uh, try to attract new investors more investors and uh, make it tries to make uh, its a public issue successful okay so if there are no pro potential projects there is no point of retaining the earnings so where does the retain earnings go it goes to reserves and surplus account reserves and surplus account means the the re reserves and surplus will be converted into investments so what ramalingaraj did was all this uh, i think infosys uh, ex chairman uh, who is he murthy narayan murthy he always said that value a company based on its uh, reserves and surplus he is so strong when you value a company so ramalingaraju's uh, satyam computers that time was so rich because it has it's a cash rich company then suddenly he broke out 
so why i'm telling you this is when a company ha has reserves it has to be deployed somewhere okay if not it cannot microsoft for many years more than a decade it didn't pay dividends it had been retaining the earnings and investing in new project that's how it has expanded so dividend decisions in your second semester if you can recall uh modigliani and miller theory mm theory of capital structure and uh, model okay uh bird in hand approach okay so you don't rely on future so why people look for uh, immediate profits through dividends walter model dividend walter model gordon models of uh, dividend we have seen that so dividend has more role in valuation if the whole or majority of the shareholders or the whole country's company shareholders are looking for dividends okay so that's how companies are valued based on dividends if dividends are not paid then you cannot value a company based on dividends so in the international context it extends it extends because you take reliance you take uh, uh, wipro you take tcs these are listed in foreign exchanges new york stock exchanges and nasdaq so i hope you all are aware right yes sir yeah they are aware you all are aware okay so reliance is around 2000 rupees in india so how it has to be priced in new york stock exchange so almost as meghna was strongly focusing on exchange rate exchange rate determines the price because value is in india it is an indian company value is here price but price is there in here in indian rupees there in us dollars also you take wipro its price is around i think 400 rupees if it is 400 rupees how many dollars it should be there check the exchange rate may not be exactly there it could be a little low or more because exchange rate costs are also there so definitely it will be little less than the conversion so when people look at dividend decisions they also look at adrs or gdrs issued out of country also so for an mnc to make a dividend decision adrs issue gdrs issue and dividend uh, payment for them also is a major consideration so this way you have investment decision financing decision and uh, uh, dividend decision and liquidity when you make a decision okay so i think with this uh, we are done with this if you have a question you can ask me if not we meet in the next class okay so we'll uh, stop the session for today